Hi everyone, and um, as promised from yesterday's video, uh, we have now got a crazy game uh, going on in the Oxford uh, Friday Cup, or, or play all. Um, I'm playing my round one opponent again, so I'm playing against Patrick. Um, how the all play all worked is that you'd play against each opponent once with white and once with black, because we had perfect numbers for that. Um, this is slightly earlier on because of the messed up order of me being ill. Um, so this is the order that I played in, so I played Patrick twice early on. I think he went on uh, to win the tournament, so he did very well. Um, but this is a pretty insane game, and uh, lots of pause moments and calculations. So, uh, but better get into it. So he plays d4, and as we talked about last time, I tried d5 out in my opening, I played d5. And uh, I mentioned that I wasn't particularly happy if people didn't play c4, and unfortunately my opponent played bishop f4. Now, of all the things to be unhappy about, the London system is a perfectly fine opening to sort of not know too much about, which sounds disrespectful to the London system, but it is a system opening. If, if you play relatively normal moves, you will get a normal position, um, in theory. <laughs> we'll see what actually happens in the game. Um, but yeah, I just play knight f6, these are all pretty standard moves, knight c3. So he goes to the Jabava London actually, so it's not just a pure uh, London, uh, London system. And I remember seeing a game um, where uh, a6 was played, so I decided to play a6. And the idea of a6 is simply just stopping uh, knight b5 for the time being. And now a lot of tricks that white has against this uh, weak pawn uh, don't often come into play. And it just means that life is quite simple for black, and I can just use easy developing moves. And already the position as of move three is very playable for black, and of all the scary things that white can launch on you, I think this is one of the nicer ones to play against. He plays e3, classic London style. I develop my bishop before wanting to close my pawn chain. He also develops his bishop. I was slightly. This move seems slightly odd to me. Um, I see now that it's been played by loads of top players, so it's perfectly fine. But And in the game, I realise why it was played, but to me, it just seems odd to give up the light square bishop when white's uh, pawns are all on dark squares. Like, this is white's strongest bishop, and this is probably going to be my weakest one once I close my own structure. So I was happy exchanging. He takes back. And what I was expecting in the game was queen takes, and the whole point, I guess, of him giving up the bishop a stronger bishop as he can then break in the centre. So this is the move that I was worried about for most of the game. Um, I played e3, seems natural now just developing my other bishop. Uh, this game at this point I've been following some top games. Currently we're uh, a Carlson Nakamura game, so this is all uh, top theory. Um, just, yeah, it's just nice to see that you're following along the right lines uh, when coming up with ideas on the spot, because I wasn't entirely sure after a6, that was kind of out of prep, hence why uh, d5 isn't my normal opening. Uh, he plays bish uh, queen b3, which comes with a threat against my um, b7 pawn, so I have to defend it, and I do play, play b6, seems normal, natural way to defend it. Um, I could also play b5, but... To me, this seemed quite committal, and it's also making a weakness on c5, which I wasn't a big fan of either. Imagine this knight somehow getting here. Obviously, it can't at the moment, but this is now a permanent weakness that I can't defend, whereas with b6, I can not I can now defend that, and also I'm able to push my c5 backwards board. So I think this is the best way to go about defending on b7. Um, he brings his rook out. I decide that this is a lot of pressure now that I'm experiencing, so I need to do sort of the same thing he did in exchange bishops. Um, but I'm going to take my queen rather than the pawn. He goes for a check, and I'd like to you to pause the video for the first time. There's going to be a few this uh, video, and try and think of a way to block this check. So the best way to block this check is to either play c6 is one way, uh, blocking with the queen is another way, and uh, knight c6 also works, but it's not as good. So basically c6 and queen d6. Well, I played in the game, and to me what seemed like my natural move and hence and maybe why my opponent went for queen a4 is knight e7. And unfortunately, if you want to pause the video for a second time, this is actually a significant blunder. And um, try and work out and punish uh, black for uh, trying to have his cake and eat it and get all the nice developing moves. <laughs> So yeah, simply white uh, plays queen, I say 
simply, but knight b5 is a really nice move. The idea being that I can't take because then my rook would fall and then my other rook would fall with check as well. And if I don't do anything though, and I have to move my queen away, uh, then I'm leaving the defense of the c7 pawn and then he can take and then he's also getting my other pawn and this just feels awful too. So we got to this position. Oh, sorry, we got to this position, and I sort of sat there for a while calculating. And if I move my queen away and I allow him to do this, then I'm at least a pawn in exchange down. My position is terrible, and nothing. I'm probably going to lose. He's a good enough to player to convert that. However, what I did think, and which is what I went for, and hence why this game became pretty crazy, I just thought, well, if I'm going to lose the rook, and this rook isn't really doing anything anyway. I might as well just lose both of them and then just go for an all-out attack and see if I can get him to make a mistake and then perhaps maybe um, play for some sort of practical advantage because I'm already just uh, objectively bad so I might as well just go for it. So I decide to take the knight, allowing him, and he does rightly, to take one rook, takes the other. And here comes my attacking plan. Notice that his queen is now stuck on a8 for now and or h8 sorry and now i need to be quick and just develop all my pieces go for the king and hope that he basically messes up because if he's able to get his queen back oh i waste some tempo then he's definitely just going to be able to consolidate and win so so uh first things first just go for a check so queen before he played king f1 which is a perfectly fine move and the idea is that eventually his king's going to hide behind these pawns um, I decide to insert my queen in, thre uh, threaten to take the rook, and I'm also threatening to take this pawn. He plays knight e2, defending the rook, um, and also stopping the pawn coming with a check, but I can still take the pawn anyway. Uh, he decides to take on... Oh, no, he doesn't yet. He decides to play rook e1, and sort of just protect his king. Again, still, this is completely winning for white. Um, but now my pieces are coming, and it becomes a lot harder for him to play. So knight e4. Um... Now he's got to defend, and he decides to start by bringing his queen back, so he brings his queen back. Now my not other knight is coming, again completely winning for white, but this is getting a bit more scary for uh, for white, and they're going to have to be a bit more accurate. And at this point he makes, um, I wouldn't say, it is a blunder, and I, I think it's a blunder in light of the position. He's still better after this move. It just means that I now have my practical chances are going to go up quite a lot. And he plays g3. And the reason why I think he played g3 is so his king can come this way, the rook comes over, the king moves back, and then uh, his king is safe and the game is over, basically. But the problem with this move is that it hasn't really done anything right now, and it's also made a massive weakness on the f3 square. And there's a big issue that he's about to run into in a second. After knight d2 check. And now, it went from him completely winning to one move here wins the game for white. Or is still winning for white. And one move is now actually drawing. And perhaps if you want to pause the video for a third time, there's still more to come, don't worry. Um, and work out which move you would play here as white. And which move uh, draws the game and which move is still winning for white. So, uh, the move that's still winning for white is king g2, for the reason that this knight can't come back this way, and um, if you come to check, then you can uh, keep walking out and it's fine. Uh, but what you played in the game is king g1, which is actually inaccurate, because now when I come back for the check, either um, he comes to f1, which is now actually worse for white, and it's different because... Uh, if we go back to this position, now he, the knight's here when the king and rook are here. And now I can just, uh, if he does this, and I can take here, he takes here, and I believe queen b1, yeah, picking up the other rook. And now uh, black is actually better. Um, this is telling, oh, it's mate of one even, oh wow. I did, did not see that at first glance, but he now has to block with the knight even, and then, oh, this is why it's completely winning. So either, because I was about to say the material is actually equal, uh, but either he has to give up all of his pieces, or he gets mated in a one. So that's pretty nice. And then, um, if he comes forward now, which is what he played in the game, um, the reason why it's drawing is I'm able to come to e4, and there's so many threats coming from this knight discovery, that basically he has to move out of the way, and he can't move back. 
if he decides to move back, he can't go to this square because it's check. And if he moves to this square, then again, rook takes here, here, and queen check, and we get the same idea. So the only way for him to continue this game is actually to move his king forward, and this gets really scary. And um, I play the right move in this position, and why it's a draw is um, actually... Oh, no, this isn't. <laughs> Oops, uh, we blunder the queen. Sorry. Okay, now this is the probably the final pause the video moment. Uh, this is drawing, but you need to con find the right continuation and why it's drawing, and perhaps come up with it. Um, unfortunately, uh, it's not why I played in the game, but I think my move is very good as well. Uh, but we'll see why. So uh, the the main way to draw this position is just to repeat moves. So by playing this check, he can't come forward uh, because it's blocked. And if he decided to go back, then I repeat. This is the simplest one to uh, sort of analyze. And if he was to block like this, this is actually a blunder now after a uh, night back. And then I can start checkmating him. Uh, he actually has to give up his queen at this point. Um, so yeah, that was a nice move. And the final option to bring your queen obviously just loses the queen instantly. Or you could just take the queen like this as well. Um, so yeah, he, in this position, he has no, he's no better choice but to repeat himself. Now, unfortunately, I didn't go for that in the game because I saw a different idea going on here. And you might have noticed this as well if you pause the video. Is that the king doesn't really have many squares left. So he's got this square, this square, this square. Uh, these two squares are currently covered by the queen, and this, these squares would also be covered by the queen if the knight moved. Also, if the knight moved and we went here, obviously it can be taken right now, but just for argument's sake, if this queen couldn't take on g5, this would actually be checkmate, as the king's completely cut off. Um, which is kind of crazy. <laughs> I managed to induce the king all the way to centre, hence why g3 was a bit of an awkward move. So, with that in mind, that's why I play a6 in this position, and I'm just thinking, well, I'm just going to go for checkmate. I mean, there's nothing he could do here. I managed to calculate if he decides to take the pawn, um, he can't do this because of uh, knight g4, I believe, was the threat, going after this and also threatening this idea again, and it would just also just lead to checkmate or significant loss of material. It's, it, despite all the material, the computer's giving this as minus 9, and this is pretty lethal. So you can't take the pawn, I calculated. Um, and now I'm threatening to bring this knight back, and the difference would be, let's give him a nothing move. Uh, when this knight comes back, he has to take, but now I can take back with my pawn. This is actually winning for black, and uh, computers even announcing checkmate, because this is coming, and then the queen will come back, and yeah, the game's just over. So, um, unfortunately for me, um, after I played a6, I didn't account for one move, and there is only one move in this position uh, that continues the advantage for white. And unfortunately for me, my opponent actually managed to find it, but perhaps pause the video and see if you can, um, as I didn't see it in the game. And if white doesn't have this move, then they're completely lost. Hence why at the time I thought a6 was a great move, because I thought I was going to win. Well... Annoyingly, sadly, the defensive resource is knight c3, and this is a crazy move and really well done for my opponent for spotting this. The problem now is that I can't go backwards and forwards repeating like I did before, because I can't go for the draw anymore, So because the knight covers this square, so that's the draw out of the window. Now, am I winning anymore? Because remember, knight g5 was winning for me. Well, the problem is that um, he can now take my knight, and if I take back, my queen is still hanging. hanging. And this position is two rooks for a knight, he's still completely winning. So, unfortunately, yes, my opponent found the one resource in this position to manage to uh, stay advantage in the game. But equally, I missed that resource as well, and I even had a drawn position, despite completely throwing the game that early on. Uh, which is really just crazy, and um, the game did continue after this, but after this point, uh, he managed to consolidate, and all the tactics don't work anymore, and I just started going for uh, cheaper tricks. I also thought in this position that I made it be messed up, I should have just attacked the knight, and that would have given me more practical chances, but um, he's managed to consolidate, the pawn has come forward, it's really hard for me to attack the king. Um, I go for one last idea, my idea being that if he takes this knight, then hopefully... Maybe he'll blunder into a stalemate uh, sort of 
repeti repetition of moves because he's got nothing else to do. Um, but after he, he didn't play that, he played a lot better. Um, he just took my knight that was actually writing something. And at this point I resigned because I'm out of tricks. Um, so it was unfortunate because I lost two rooks in the opening out of stupidity. And then I managed to bring the game back. The game was actually a draw at one point. And I was even at a point where I was completely winning apart from one move. And uh, congrats to my opponent for actually finding that move. Because that was quite hard to find I think. Um, but yeah, really crazy game. And almost managing to beat somebody 200 points rated higher than me. And uh, uh, that was a nice experience. Um, so yeah, it was a really fun game to play. And uh, I've still got some more games to show. I think there's 10 in total. So this will be a, a longer series than normal. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching.